Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partners podcast brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. I'm your host, Greg Phelps, along with dementia care expert Tifa Snow. It's fun being called an expert, isn't it? You know, um, I've recently that been... that again? I... <laughs> <laughs> that lady, I you know. We were, we were the other one, <laughs> apparently the other one, but I'm here today, so you get me. <laughs> okay. I, I've recently been spending some time in a few different care facilities and I had mm. forgotten about the gender imbalance in both residents and care mm. staff. And with residents, it appears to be about the 80% range of women versus men. And I think that generally sort of follows the mortality rates, but you can you can look at that for me if you will. Mm -hmm. But turning to care staff, I think the imbalance is even higher. I think there might only be about 15% men. So let's just back up the truck and go to the, the residents, and then we can talk about staffing and, mm -hmm. and are there benefits to adding more men? Well, the interesting thing, Greg, that you bring up is that um, there are typically more women in residential care because women, as a rule, will care for males if they're in a partner relationship or a familial relationship. It's very common for women to care for males as long as humanly possible. And their break point is when the human being that they're caring for is up at hours over time where they just give up. They can't keep going. That sleep deprivation, the risk of something happening, the person keeps falling or, or whatever it is, but they're not getting enough sleep. That That's when a, a female provider is more likely to end up going, I can't do this anymore. Or the person keeps getting out. And no matter what they do, they can't figure out how to keep them in the house. And so that will scare them into doing a placement. That as a rule, you know, people who are in that caring role for males will make a great effort to try, if at all possible, to keep them in their space. And we don't know how much is due to the males in unwillingness to make the transition as well, which also plays into this. But when we get to male carers, um, as a rule, male carers will get to a place where incontinence is a primary driver. And, you know, it's like, I don't know how to get this to work well. I mean, I, I'm having trouble. Um, or the, the person who they're caring for is not really acknowledging and recognizing the need for care. And the male can't figure out how to transition that. And they've tried lots of things. Or the male has never been in a care role before in that intimate care role. And so they're they're basically to a place where they go, I don't know what to do. Somebody who knows what they're doing needs to be doing this because they need help with showering. They need help with bathing. They need help with dressing. They need help with mouth care. They're, they're, they're having trouble. And so it's the reality as well is it's not just being driven by more women living longer. It's also the care pattern that we have for males versus females. And when people will say enough is enough, I can't, I need help. Um, and as a rule, that's contributing to that difference you saw as well, I think. I, I hate to generalize, right. but um, uh, women generally are the child rearers, so they may mm -hmm. have had a sort of more caring more experience. experience. Yeah. Um, well, we're changing. You know, what's interesting, Greg, is I'll be curious to see what happens with this next generation. Um, the one where there was a shared, often a shared responsibility of child rearing, which was very different than the eighty-year-olds of today, um, even the late seventies, where you know the late seventy-year-olds where, you know, males were less involved in the child care. Now we get into the group that's like, hey, this one's yours at 5 p.m. <laughs> you know, I'm taking a break. You do diapers. You do the bottle. You do, you know, and there was a, it was a transition. So we don't know how this will play out as we move forward. It may even out a little bit more. We may have more males involved in, um, in residential care but you know the reality is right now yeah no there's classically a lot more females than males as residents and then we have the males that when they come in they tend to be more introverts they tend to be people who don't you know want to socialize and, and they may also have more challenges in care um, making them less engaged and involved in the community as well 
I mean, that's the other risk. Now, in my experience in visits to different care homes, I have found that being a male is actually beneficial because I, I may or may not charm some of the women and guys tend to sort of like to talk to another guy. You're, you're a chick magnet and you're a guy magnet, both. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the ability to have a magnetic personality when you're a male. It's true. I mean, I wouldn't argue with that. I, you know, if you have a, a decent personality and you're not um, you're not pushy, you will find a nice soft land frequently um, when you're trying to find ways to engage people if you're male. I have also uh, used some skills that uh, I learned from some lady named, what was it, Tippy? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. The one that's the expert, you mean. Yeah, like that one. <laughs> yep. So would you consider sort of saying to men that it's not a bad career to be in? You've got some things to get over. you got to get over yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. You want to build uh, some comfort level at, you know, doing things with people um, and really recognizing you don't need to carry me over the threshold. You don't need to take care of me. Um, as a male entering this profession, it's a great opportunity to use what you bring to the table, which is you, and say, hey, I'm Greg, and you are, because you guys, you know, you did the sports teams, you did often the, you know, the clubs, the groups. You're from business side of the street. You're very used to going out meeting and greeting people. So I think if we have people who are interested in either a second career or even a first career, um, the ability of males to form, you know, bonds and relationship around work, uh, around a common goal is really a plus in this in this environment. And the ability to engage in doing things is also hugely beneficial um, and form that kind of working relationship that's a really healthy working relationship i you know males can really find great spaces has been my experience and they're they're for my world they're great to work with you know when they're open to the idea that yeah i'm here to coach you um yeah i'm a female sorry about that um but i'm not i'm not worn out by it so how about if we figure this out so there may be a little sexism on on some other fronts as well. So it, it, it's like everything else that we talk about. It's complicated. It is. It is. And we don't recognize our own biases until we're confronted by them sometimes. And we're like, huh, I didn't think that would bother me. It, apparently it does. So let me figure this out. How can I work through this? And I do think there is a lot of that. Oh, you're a nurse. You know, and sort of like, so it's like, yeah, or I'm a nursing assistant, or, you know, you're the doctor, <laughs> that sort of like disbelieving voice is like, huh, so you're here to help me, what? And it's like, well, you were going to get washed up and cleaned up. Now I can set stuff up and we have a choice. I can provide some guidance and assist, or, you know, I can step away and see how it goes. Which would you rather we do? Um, I mean, and then somehow that idea of giving me some control which I would recommend the females learn to do with male clients as well, which we are not real good at. We just assume it's okay to be in somebody's bathroom with them and help to get their clothes up. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. I am i don't know who you are. Get out of here. It's like, mm, same problem can happen on the opposite side of the gender street, I think. Deepa, I, I think this is one of these topics that we may revisit someday in the future. And and hopefully we'll see a slow evolution towards mm. more men getting into the field. And, and you know, just well, oh, Greg, water. this one other thing, um, the reimbursement rate for this, these work. Um, well, in situation. some places, um, they're not badly compensated. In other uh -huh. places, I understand they're very poorly compensated. Yeah. So if you're trying to raise a family, you mm. probably, you know. Yeah, and that actually, you know, historic roles, I mean, that's a tough space for males to let go of an income stream that in some spaces is significantly higher in a number of careers options. Um, and that's another reason this one, you know, we could talk more, we might, because, you know, this all really got to a head, I would say, in the 70s interestingly enough, in 60s and 70s, where we said, well, you know, what's so special about nursing homes? Anybody could do that. And it became, well, as long as you've, 
you know, you know, something about care. Oh, you women, you did the home thing. How about you do it? And it's like, <laughs> this is complicated stuff. What do you mean? How about we do it? But, you know, that's me, the female here saying, I would just say that. Deepa, thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> You've been listening to the Dementia Care Partners podcast brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. For more dementia care information and training, go to tipasnow.com. If you're signed into your Spotify account, we'd love to get your feedback. How? Click into the episode details and look over the episode question and poll. Send us your comments and vote so we can answer your questions and better tailor this content to your needs. We look forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm Tipa Snow. And... You just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Oh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www.tipasnow.com, where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.